This is Toledo Symphony Lab, a behind-the-scenes look at the world of classical music from WGTE Public Media and your Toledo Symphony. I'm Brad Cresswell. Joining me today are the Toledo Symphony's president and CEO, Zach Vassar, principal second violin and artistic administrator, Merwin Sue. We also have the TSO's music director, Alain Trudel, and the TSO's marketing director, Felicia Canny. Now, we also have a very special guest who has joined us by phone, and that is... Let me do a little fanfare. (laughs) (laughs) That is Renee Elise Goldsberry. Welcome, Renee. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. Yeah, well, you know, we like to make our guests feel very welcome when we when we bring them <laughs> and on. Very important. Thank yeah. You. This is Zach. That doesn't happen every time somebody says your name. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Okay. <laughs> not in my house. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what we can do about that. Uh, where are you right now? Are you in New York or are you uh, out on the West Coast? I'm in New York, New York. New York, New York. What a wonderful town. Yes. Soon to make your way here to Toledo to the Stranahan Theater. I should mention the concert is Saturday, January 25th at 8 p.m. Great big uh, musical party you're, you're going to be bringing to us on the stage. Uh, folks can find more information about this and tickets at ToledoSymphony.com. Also, the box office, 419-246-8000. So, uh, may I call you, Renee? Is that okay with you? That's perfect. That's okay. what they call me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I didn't want to... You got to ask. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I guess w- I jumped the gun on that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's okay. <laughs> I called her that before, too. But uh, we're so glad that you're able to spend a little time with us today. Uh, the Toledo Symphony is sort of like your backup band for this appearance, right? And, <laughs> and you're singing a, a whole huge number of different pieces, some Broadway favorites, uh, maybe some soul, rhythm and blues, some gospel, that sort of thing. How long have you been doing these symphony concerts in conjunction with, with different orchestras? I started, oh gosh, it's been about two years, I think, with the Boston Pops. Um, I just uh, I kind of dropped in my lap to come and perform um, one set with them, um, you know, and I just fell in love with it. I loved the uh just being in this in this the space and i loved the opportunity to sing you know music that brings in like such a, a really diverse group of um audiences um to hear just the best musicians in the world play i just i just loved the whole thing and so we continue to develop the show from there and and now we've been um i, I actually come with my band mm-hmm. so it's uh it's uh, it's a, it's a it's a small band um, on stage with with a wonderful orchestra, and we've been all over the country, all over the country. I know that Boston Pops performance. Uh, looking at the little video you had on your Twitter feed, you seemed very excited to be going out there <laughs> and doing that. It's concert. hard to not be excited with the sound that's coming out behind you and all around you. It's it, it's it's it never ever feels normal. It always feels like you're living a a really um, surreal and wonderful experience. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Well, I guess we, we can't really uh, talk about you and your singing without going back and looking at your career and some of the amazing stuff you've done. A lot of people know you, of course, from Hamilton, uh, originating the role of Angelica Schuyler. Incidentally, we had uh, Leslie Odom here. What was it, last year, I think? Two, Two years, years ago. ago. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed to have a pretty good time, so. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> My five-year-old son was in the front row of that concert, and he just, it was Leslie Odom, he was just so, so wonderful. He pointed him out and said, yeah. oh, I'm going to be doing the clean version of the show just because of him. <laughs> <laughs> he felt... <laughs> He's yeah. so silly. That's hilarious. What about you, Renee? Are you going to keep it clean on, on stage? I'm super clean. Yeah, that's I'm what I thought. Clean. Um, yeah, and I, I, only because uh, only because there's so much music that um, that really is universal 
Yeah. So you, you don't necessarily have to sell out at all in any way, shape, or form to find a, a huge audience that will enjoy it. Yeah, I I think the very first big concert I did was at um, Brigham Young University, um, and they're they're quite specific about the kind of music you can play. Oh yeah, of course. There, um, and so it kind of was a really nice way to start the whole, really to kind of cement what the message is of the show, and and it really is a, a celebration of love. Yeah, a family-friendly show. And, of course, you yourself have a family that I've heard you talk about, you know, balancing your career with your family life as well. I I imagine a little easier for you living in New York doing, like, Broadway and musical theater. But then there's also when you go on tour and stuff like that. I mean, how how do you balance out those two facets of your, your life? It's challenging whether you're working in town or not. I, I don't think that people that travel a lot for work, um, you know, have a, um, a much harder time than anybody that has a huge responsibility. Um, so that's a, that's a, also another universal message as a person yeah. with a really big, um, I feel kind of like mission in life of what you're trying to do, um, which never um, is a priority over your family. But even when I was in New York City and I was in Hamilton, I felt like, um, I think part of my brain was always, you know, trying to make sure I was ready for a show that night. And uh, now I, I, if the show might be in, you know, Toledo, it's still, it's still some, a part of your brain that's, that's preparing and trying to sharpen that you have to make sure um, doesn't take away from your children. Um, but the beautiful thing about a show that really is just me on the stage is that all of the things I experience in my life with my family really are wonderful patter for my show. Ah, yeah. um, I just, I, I think um, as a, as a parent, I think, the experiences that you have just kind of, it just makes you better at whatever you do. I really feel that strongly. Yeah. Well, let me just say, and I know you've heard this before, but you are uh, an incredibly talented uh, performer as well as actress and singer. My background for many years was uh, as an opera singer. So I came out of the classical tradition, but I, I sit in awe of you for your ability to sing so well from top to bottom the sound of your voice, the countenance that you bring to it, but also your pronunciation. I mean, listening to that <laughs> song, that when you go into the rap and Satisfied from Hamilton, I understood every word. I mean, that is amazing, and you don't hear that very often in singers. How how do you achieve that sort of thing? Oh, my goodness. I, I, I think that's just... Uh... A lot of schooling, a lot of schooling. Um, and, um, but also, you know, it's, I think it's just the way that I, I talk. Um, and I, and I think, um, the beauty of really well written music is that you want every word to be understood. Um, there's not, there's not, there's actually, there are no songs I do in my show, you know, even the ones that are not from Hamilton where the lyrics don't matter. You know, right. where, you know, the melody and the lyrics don't aren't as important as, you know, whatever line the, the strings are playing. I mean, that's that's the beauty about about doing this that, you know, and the and people that come is, you know, people really appreciate um, every aspect of, you know, what's happening, happening musically, because it, it, the marriage of it is just such a beautiful thing to experience. And and the lyrics of these songs tell really, really beautiful stories that I think we need to hear. Wonderful. Now, I think folks might be interested to know, I I know you grew up in Houston, but you also have connections to Detroit, right? I do. I went to high school in Detroit, and I I think I have a pretty strong contingency of people that want to drive that really long drive from from Toledo. (laughs) It's not that long. Uh, Because I haven't done, well, I haven't done a concert in Detroit yet. I'm going to be doing one um, there, I think, this summer, and they've been kind of mad at me because they feel like I've been everywhere but that part of the world. (laughs) And so when I told them I was coming to Toledo, they were like, finally! (laughs) Finally! Um, I'm I'm really excited because it feels like coming home. Yeah, totally. Well, then I take it you've been in Toledo, or at least in this area, in the past. 
I have. Um, one of my really good friends went to school in Toledo when she graduated from high school. Oh. And I, uh, that's when I discovered how close we are, because I got in the car and I'd go visit her, listening to James Taylor all the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that his, you know, that yeah. greatest hits tape back in the day. That's what it was. Tape. <laughs> I just back in point the day. out tape. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. It has a white cover. I, I, I couldn't remember. even make it through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I couldn't even make it all the way there before the tape was over. That's how close we were to Toledo. <laughs> you have to drive very slowly. Then, then you can... <laughs> <laughs> Make it all the way there. Well, that's wonderful. Yeah. We're, we're glad that you're coming back to this area. Why don't we turn the clock back a little bit and talk about your early years? Because I'm always fascinated to hear from like an artist such as yourself who, who is really, you know, reached the top as far as all the things that you've accomplished in your career. Take it all the way back to the beginning and, and tell us a little bit how this started to blossom for you, how your interest uh, came to be. It was the summer. It was burning hot. I lived in Houston, Texas. I used to set my alarm clock to watch all my children on television because I didn't want to go outside. So I would like sleep as long as possible and then start watching television. And my mother would have none of it. So she had a friend who was, uh, had a daughter that was going to a theater camp um, down the road and they had space in the car. So she put my brother and I in the back seat, strapped us in, and uh, we went to uh, to Houston International Theater School. And I did a production of Guys and Dolls where I played a, a girl in the chorus, and my life was changed. I just absolutely fell in love with performing and with musicals and with theater, and I just prayed that I would get to do it for the rest of my life somehow. And I, I literally prayed when the show was over because I was I was so sad that it was over I, I felt for the first time that kind of pain that you feel when when you're not going back the next day because the show's closed mm-hmm. and that oh, family yeah. feels like it's over you know um, I just prayed you know can I you know if, if you could let me keep doing this Lord the next time someone points at me to sing I'll sing loud yeah. you know, <laughs> to, to keep me in a show so I'm I'm you know really amazed and grateful at the gift that you know here I am so many years later with an opportunity to uh, to keep doing these, this kind of music, um, and 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 like in the show, we do we do we do a lot of uh, songs from the theater. It's some of the best music in the world, but we also do a lot of, as you said, um, you know, soulful songs and pop songs and folk songs. The uh, and 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 what's beautiful is that the the theme of the night really is uh, consistent over you know many different genres of music. You mentioned you were watching soap operas when you were young, and then you got cast on a soap opera. You were I on uh, One Life to Live, right, for for right. some time. Uh, how did that experience change you? Not just you know coming into your own as an actress, but also as a as a singer, as a singing performer. It's funny. I um, I was doing The Lion King. I'd, I'd moved to New York to do The Lion King, and uh, I went to an audition for that soap opera One Life to Live, and I was. Super excited when I got the job, but I was concerned that I would be, you know, someone on a soap opera because there's a lot at the time there were a lot of soap operas in New York City and a lot of wonderful theater actors were working on those shows. And um, I was concerned that I would be on the soap opera and they wouldn't write for me and they wouldn't let me do theater. Mm -hmm. And the, the beauty is that they actually let me do theater and they wrote for me. So it was really a miracle. So I had that privilege of being you know, doing double duty for the four years I was on that show. I got to, uh, during the day, you know, do all this high drama. I think my character was blind at some point. I played Mm -hmm. Evangeline Williamson and I had love affairs and got my heart broken. And I was a lawyer that, you know, saved people from getting, you know, the electric chair. I mean, I did every kind of major thing you could possibly do um, as an actress on the show. And then I also at night um, was in, you know, the color purple, the first uh, the first time it was on Broadway, and I had the honor of being in a wonderful production of uh, Two Gents, um, Shakespeare in the Park, musical performance with uh, Rosario Dawson and Norm Lewis and Oscar Isaac. I mean, I just I just had a a really exciting time, and and the, I really give so much. Um, I just I just fell in love with being able to do more than one thing in terms of uh, you know what I do as an artist. I like to call myself a storyteller. Um, as opposed to, you know, having to specify I'm a singer or an actor. If, you know, if there's a way to tell a good story, I just want to be able to tell it, whether that's through song only or through only through words. Or The only thing I really can't do is, is draw and paint. <laughs> uh, 
Have you um, tried? I'm not that great of a dancer, let me be honest. Uh-huh. <laughs> but um, um, but you know, when it comes to singing and to acting, I'm I'm always excited about you know a great challenge. Well, you did a little dancing on One Life to Live. I saw that video of you singing the Oogie <laughs> Boogie, right? You know what oh, I'm talking about? Oh, you see that. Yeah. See, I can Oogie Boogie. I can, I can Boogie Woogie Oogie. Yeah. Um, that I can do. Um, but uh, my triple great. pirouette is an embarrassment at this point. <laughs> well, we want to ask you to, to launch into any dance moves when you come to the stage. <laughs> So, um, so you on one life to live. You were in a love triangle, and on Hamilton, you were in a uh, sorts of a, a sort of a love oh, triangle. Yeah. Is is there a Definitely. theme here? How do you pick your projects? <laughs> 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 oh my God! There's nothing better than being in a love triangle, and um, and and actually, sometimes you know, being the character that you sh- that shouldn't be rooted for um, works out really well too. I think that's one major thing I learned um, in a soap opera is how to kind of pull off whatever idea is is written for your character in a way that the audience will root for you because that's really what you have to be able to do to stay on a soap opera. A soap opera is like a really scary game of survival because they 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 don't have to kill you, they can just bring you back looking like a totally different person. <laughs> so true. <laughs> so you last as an actor because, you know, people are rooting for for your character and and that's um you know something that you have to do when you're playing, you know, somebody who's in love with your sister's husband, like, you know, like Angelica is in Hamilton, you know, you have to figure out how to kind of walk that line of, you know, the love affair really, you know, is, is really, I, the way I played Angelica is with the sister, not necessarily with Alexander, even though she's in love with him. You just always want to find a way that, that people will understand, you know, the pain that your character is in and, and what they want and root for her, even though if they really kind of thought about it, they'd be like, no, I don't think you should break up their marriage. <laughs> no, I don't think you should take a break. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, that's kind of a, that's one of the things that you learn. And uh, when things are written really well, like so many of the shows I've had the privilege of being a part of, um, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun needle to thread. Yeah. You've done some songwriting yourself, right? I have. Yeah. Um, and, and, uh, and it's funny, I was, I'm, I was looking, I'm going to go to a meeting after this. I'm, I'm always trying to think of how to keep the show fresh and alive and, and, um, and really, you know, special for people. And so I, I'm going to sit down with my music director and manager even today just to think about, you know, it's 2020, you know, and it's Toledo. Like, what are we going to do with the show that <laughs> makes it even more relevant and, uh, and, you know, and feel really specific to this moment? Yeah. And um, and so I was just kind of listening to a lot of music and listening to my songs that I do and trying to, you know, just kind of rethinking and and uh, going through it. And, and I realized as I was listening to a million songs on Spotify that what I really need to do with the show is is to add some of my own original originals into into it, because I think people want to hear, um, you know, you know, they also want to hear what you have to say. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of the next thing, you know, I'm, I'm always, I'm always kind of trying to evolve it. And, and I think uh, that would be an interesting way to go. There's what you hear now in my show is maybe every major songwriter. <laughs> Cause, uh, <laughs> Cause I feel like if you come to hear, you know, your orchestra play, you should hear them playing the best music, you know, without question. And music is about a relationship. And um, it's really wonderful to hear music that you've had a relationship with, you know, that predates the person that you're coming to see. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's mainly what you get. But I, I'm I'm considering adding some more original work to the show at some point. Well, that would be fabulous. It, it seems like you pour so much time and energy and thought into these basically one-offs where you're going and doing, you know, one performance. Do you feel like it's more incumbent on you to really pour everything into a a one time only show as opposed to when you're doing, you know, six or seven a week on Broadway. It's a great question. And that is exactly how I feel. Um, it's actually, you know, paralyzing, (laughs) but I, I feel, um, I do feel a greater responsibility. I somehow or another, I think it's easier to play a character in a show, um, then it is to just be yourself in a moment. And I think if somebody comes to spend an hour or two with you, they should feel, you know, that they heard really, really wonderful music, but they should also feel like they know you. They should feel like they spent a couple hours with you. Um, and it shouldn't just be about the songbook. And so it's really important to me to be as open and candid as possible about, um, just kind of who I am and, you know, so that you would feel like you were, that this beautiful symphony space was, was, was our living room mm, yeah. <laughs> and we, uh, we're having a really great time together. And that's, uh, 
that that's always my goal and I'm always happy at the end of the night when when people don't want to go home. They want to <laughs> hang out a little bit longer. That's yeah. that's that's always that always makes me feel like it worked. Renee, I know you're going to be working on uh, some of the the songs that we'll be enjoying, but is there anything on your your set list that's an absolute must have? Um, well, I, I don't think I could get away without singing the songs from Hamilton. Yeah. <laughs> so that ain't going nowhere. Um, I'm hearing a silent chorus of your fans <laughs> screaming right now. Yeah, we're screaming yeah. silently. Yes. Yeah. You know what? I don't think, you know, Hamilton was 2016. I don't know. No. no <laughs> so four years ago, right? <laughs> so four years ago. Yeah. Um, no, I, uh, you know, I. what's really beautiful is uh, that the music um, from from all of the music we're doing is really timeless. Um, it really is. It's really timeless, and and uh, and that's uh, it's just a testament to really great songwriters that are yeah. writing about you know what 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 we're singing about is is love right, really. And um, and I didn't know when I was going through my career and and having you know kind of winning roles in certain shows that um, there would be a theme mm. that could kind of carry me into concerts around the country. But that's when it ended up happening is there, you know, when you think about Rent and The Lion King and Hamilton and a lot of the, some of the more kind of pop tunes that I'm, I do in the beginning of the set, um, that is really the theme. Um, and it's, 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 it is universal. It is timeless. And it feels good. <laughs> it really <laughs> feels good. Yeah. It, you mentioned earlier the, the quality of great writing and how much that improves the experience of being on stage. You also talked about the sound of an orchestra all around you. Is mm-hmm. there one of those wonderful feel-good moments when the words coming out of your mouth and the sounds around you just kind of click. Oh my goodness. You know, honestly, um, I'm like that waitress that you ask, you know, what should I get here? And she says, everything's good. And you roll your eyes. <laughs> 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 because, you know, I really feel that way. And I'm what I'm looking for when I like dissect the set is any moment that doesn't feel that way. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want there to be one moment that feels like, why did we waste time on that verse of the song? I really, I really am always trying to, because I, you know, I can, I can tell you that I feel that way um, about 90% of the, of the whole show. I mean, like to the point where, you know, we, we probably do it. We probably do the show every maybe three weeks or so. And, um, I'm always, you know, and so, so, cause we, we're not on a tour that it's like every single night. So we have enough time in between shows mm. that we're like, oh yeah, this is the jam, you know, like the band, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it just, we're happy to play the song because we've kind of missed them in that couple of weeks. And that, that's a testament to, I think, some really great arrangements and, and you know what? a really great orchestra. <laughs> it's, just, it's just, you know, and I and also have to say, like, the conductor, like, it's fun to be on stage, you know, and as not the star. Like, there's 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 the conductor right there who's killing it, and that's, uh, it's fun to have that personality up there, you know, leading the way. Speaking of conductors, we have our music director, Elaine Trudell, here, and, and I want to shift gears just slightly. Um, Elaine has done a lot in the in the role of education with the symphony and working with younger audiences. And I wonder if you'd mind if I read a quote of yours, Renee, about music education. Um, it goes like this. Education teaches students how to write their name. Arts education teaches students how to find their signature. I think that's Ooh, really... Ooh, I did say that. I yeah. can't believe it. <laughs> you know what you could have done to me? You could have said the quote and asked me who said it, and I would have it. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back. No. <laughs> but it's a great quote, and, and it's profound it on certain quote. levels. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what were the circumstances I, of of coming up with that that phrase? Oh, my goodness. Well, I think, you know, sadly, it's my concern about the future of the world and the yeah. fact that you have to have, um, you have to actually be quite, you know, well connected to, to, to get arts education in school. And it scares me because I, I don't know who I would be if um, my, you know, music teacher in fifth grade didn't, you know, single me out you know, for, you know, being bad and making fun of her in the back of the classroom and, you know, start giving me solos. I didn't know who I would be without, you know, this identity and this kind of ability to use that energy directed in a positive way. And it worries me. Um, It worries me that, you know, I'm not doing enough and that we're not doing enough to make sure that, you know, the kids that are coming up behind us um, have that same music teacher, you know. Um, that's standing there, you know, you know, with an eye to be able to find them 
and to, you know, give them a job, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, so that, so it concerns me. So that, that's, that's what it came from is, is, this inex, is just gratitude for this um, road that I'm traveling and wondering what my life would be without it. Now, you're saying what? You were, you were hanging out in the back of the class and, 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 <laughs> and your music teacher brought you up. How did that work? What, what was that oh, about? Oh, I was just in the back, you know, making fun of her voice making. You know, I was a clown in the class and uh, uh-huh. making all my, my, my friends laugh. And, you know, she heard me and she, 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 she busted me. <laughs> and uh, instead of, you know, sending me off to detention, she, she, she basically said, oh, we have a singer in the class. And she, you know, started having me do solos in, the, in, in school. And, and some of the teachers that, you know, you know, didn't necessarily love me all of a sudden thought I was amazing, you know. <laughs> and um, yeah, and it just, it just really, I think, changed the, you know, the, the ways that um, I think about myself. And, and, you know, just having something that you think you're good at is, is everything. Um, and even if it doesn't end up being what you end up doing for a living, these, these skills that we get as when we're in art class, is, are, they're transferable. You know, they, uh, they make us better everything, I think. Better parents, better lawyers, better, you know, truck drivers. I mean, hmm. these things are, um, this, is, this, this saves all of our lives. Well, I think you're speaking to a room full of parents with kids right now. We all have young kids, all of whom we're trying to, you know, foster interest in the arts. And how, as a parent, um, do you see those sparks of interest in your kids and how do you kind of keep those alight? It's interesting because I, I always worried about, I mean, just ironically, I used to be like, oh God, I hope my kid wants to be a doctor, you know, or something, <laughs> an engineer. <laughs> Um, you know, because, you know, the family business is, is, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it is, you know, the arts and entertainment. Um, but it's not like, you know, I'm, I can give him a job, you know, so I'm always <laughs> like, oh God, I hope, I just hope that, you know, I, I feel like your interest in this should be organic and not because, you know, you grew up in, you know, backstage at Hamilton, you know, I feel like you should have a really kind of, you know, you should do what you want to do because it's really, you know, signature, as I said, to who you are. And uh, so my concern was always, you know, hoping that I didn't have an undue influence on my children and what they wanted to be. I wanted that to come, you know, really from them. That's where I started. But now I, you know, that my son is 10 and my daughter is six, I feel that, you know, everything that happens to me probably happens to me because of the influence it has on them. So to try to fight that is ridiculous. And I should just embrace the fact that, you know, the things that happen to happens in the lives of the parents, you know, is strategically, um, you know, shapes the perspective of the children, and you just want to be a part of making sure that that shaping is positive. Well, I know, Renee, that uh, you have stuff to do. You, you talked about you have a meeting you have to go off to and everything. But uh, <laughs> before we let you go, uh, is there anything you want to say to the folks at Toledo who are waiting to see you on stage? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Just come on out. Bring your family. Bring your friends. Um, you know, get ready to sing, get ready to dance, you know, and just uh, spend some time with me. I just, I can't wait to finally come back to the Midwest. Yeah. It feels like coming home. And um, my hope is, is to meet everybody. And all those folks from Detroit get their uh, James Taylor CDs and jump in the car <laughs> and drive on down <laughs> and see you as well. Yeah. Absolutely. Renee Elise Goldsberry, coming to the Stranahan Theater Saturday, January 25th at 8 p.m., performing with her band and her other band for the night, the Toledo Symphony. More Woo-hoo. information at ToledoSymphony.com or 419-246-8000. Renee, thanks so much for your time today. We look forward to having you here. Can't wait to see you. This program is a production of WGTE Public Media in collaboration with our sponsor, the Toledo Symphony, with generous support from the Rita Barber Kern Foundation. You can download episodes of this program as a podcast by going to our website at wgte.org slash lab. You can also subscribe to us through your podcast app of choice, including Apple and Google Podcasts. My thanks to Zach Vasser, Merwin Sue, Alain Trudel, and Felicia Canny. I'm Brad Cresswell. You've been listening to Toledo Symphony Lab from FM 91.